I am back with my ICU unit. My new setup of ICU with the pop material, the fan filter, as opposed to sphagnum moss. And it's been a while since these guys have had a little bit of an inspection via the camera. I mean, I'm on top of them every day just to make sure that we don't have any issues. But uh, yeah, let's have a look-see because some things have happened and some things haven't. So let's have a start here with the Dendrobium tangerinum that never really progressed. It was on its way out and into the bin. And as I was carrying it to the bin, I saw little nubbins. And this is the result of two little nubbins on the tangerinum. And I must say, they're just lying there in this shallow Tupperware. And I keep a dome on them like so. So since we last saw this one, the filter has obviously got algae on it. I am very, very tempted to change this filter out now with a fresh one because it doesn't look nice. But a root has actually gone into the filter over there. You can see by my thumb. It's attached like that and I could snip it off. But for now, I'm just going to leave it seeing as the dirty side is over here and the cleaner side is over here. And all I do is just make sure with my little dome here that I keep a little bit of humidity around those little nubbins and maintain a little moisture in the tub so as to have that humidity. We shall see how they develop. So far, they haven't gone downhill. And I'm keeping these under this, all of these under the strip lights of the second shelf in my dining room. So they're getting a lot of light while they are trying to grow. We'll see if it amounts to anything. So far, no deterioration, and that's okay too. This is a little cakey from my Dendrobium berry odor. It was leafless, and it was on the orchid, and I wanted to clean the orchid up a little bit from all the cakeys. And it had some roots, but these roots were also attached in the leaf joints of the actual growth it was on. So it was a bit of a stress to get it off. Meantime, these roots have died off. But I've just left it sort of lying there in the corner of that little Tupperware and see what it does. And look, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to make anything or whatever, but it's a fun little experiment to do with a Dendrobium cakey. They just don't. I mean, especially the Berioda and the Hibiki. So this is how it stays. Some of the roots touch into the water a little bit, and now it's growing a little side nubbin. <laughs> oh, oh well, it's not in my way. It's nice to play around. Here's my Lelia zip back division. It's been a while as well, but look at this, you guys. You see that little growth coming there? <laughs> Da, 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 da. So happy. If it has enough energy to pro progress, I do not know. The pseudobulbs are wrinkling up a little bit, as you can see. And um, I must say that I'm, I'm really happy to even see that. Oh, look, here's between you and me. You see that little root there? I don't think it would hurt to take it out. It's a bit of a humid day today, which is nice. Makes for a nice change. Look at that. It's getting a little root. And with that little root, we are in business. Who'd have thought these scrawny, skinny little back rootless division here. There's no substance to this at all. Ha, I'll take it. So this is how it lives. Make sure that that growth is not actually touching or close to the hob material. I don't want to lose it. Let me see. What position was it in when I took it out? This one? I have to make sure. That's why I very rarely take these out because once they're in an ideal position, I don't want to move them. There we go. There it is, away from the hob material in the wetter environment. And the dome goes back on. Let's not push our luck here. All right little plate so it doesn't fall over. No wind today, people. Oh, no wind. This is perfect timing to do this. Here's my Lelia perinii back division. 
Same concept. She's too big though to have a dome on her. So I have an eye coming here, but whether that's going to make it, I don't know. Every second night or so, I dunk her upside down in a solution of calcium, magnesium, and seaweed at about 60 parts per million. So 30 of calcium, magnesium, 30 of seaweed. She's upside down overnight, every second night, and hopefully when the stomata opens, she can get something out of it. And yeah, otherwise she will be a goner. These de bulbs have deteriorated quite, quite a lot. But we shall see. This eye here that I'm banking on has not deteriorated yet. And this is the only one I can see that would do anything. The roots, of course, are all history. So she has her little environment down there. Do I need to add some water? Let me see. No, that's plenty. I'm not going to overdo it. Then next, oh yes, a newbie. You know, when you think you ooh and ah and you hum and mm, you don't know, you're uncertain. And then somebody watches your video and says, that will Sony, I needs help. It's not going to make it otherwise. Thank you, Michael McCarthy. I was not going to touch it, even though in the back of my mind, I was telling myself I should, I should, I should intervene. But for the sake of doing the inorganic mounts and seeing what works and what doesn't, I think it's clear to see that this is not working for the Wilsonii on this material here. So yes, I intervened on the same day. I kept her on the material as added humidity and sort of a wicking material because now she's resting on that. And even though those roots are dead, I don't mind if they're touching. And she is now in rescue mode. I still have the mount in case I want to change my mind. But while I'm at it, I'll put the pretty side forward, not the sticky side from the label. So yes, this is a newcomer in here. And I'm sorry about the reflection, but I'm hoping that you can see. This is probably its last hurrah. And thank you, Michael, for giving me that jolt, as in kick, to say, do this or else it's a goner. Let's see if it's not a goner. This is the maxillaria we just recently did when I showed how I use my pulp material and other methods. So this is brand new. I took the blooms off. Nothing much has happened here. And we shall see how that progresses in time. Keeping it very, very humid in there. This one has its dome on constantly. And then here are my little attempts at fell rescue which i've never been successful ever so here is my little phalaenopsis little freckles she is a no id i call her little freckles because of her cute little blooms that have little speckles on them and look at this what is she doing a lot everywhere is this wanting to be a cakey is that wanting to be a cakey is that wanting to be a cakey Here's another keiki and another keiki, and I only get one root? Maybe two? I need more roots from little freckles. This shows to me that if she makes it, she is not a happy root grower. If she wants to live by throwing out little plants, and I appreciate that, and I'm going to take it and enjoy the fact that maybe something will live, but for future reference, I know this one doesn't like producing lots of roots because all these little plantlets coming out on the side, that's just not normal. There should be at least roots in there. But she is trying. Good for her. Oh, good for her. So this little setup here, I'm quite happy to say that it is somewhat working for me. I mean, even though I can't go woohoo, check out how much the roots have grown. But she's trying so much of other things that I'm liking this so much more than the abrasive lecker when I move them or work with them, or I need to fill up the, the little deposits down here. You know, the jiggle and stuff from the lecker. 
And here is one piece of the little gem, if I can get her out. Can I get her out? She's gonna have to one day. Do I wanna do it today? Please don't. Please don't. Please, please don't break. Oh, the stress with these guys, I'm telling you. So I'm getting roots very hesitantly. And you see, this is from when she was with Lekka and the abrasion, so it was start, stop, start, stop. And that's what I want to avoid. I am getting some roots. I'm happy about that. This is one of the things that about this whole process that I have a weak orchid. By the time I put it into this kind of a emergency setup to hopefully save them, I've never gotten them to grow roots and only recently have I managed to get them to grow roots and then the roots just died on me. So no more Lekka, no more Ceramis until I haven't figured out how to be more gentle with these little guys. And this is the second piece of the purple gem because it was growing a plantlet when it went downhill due to scale over the summer of 20. I was not paying attention. I lost a fowl in 20 who, that was living next to her. And this one was growing a second plantlet and it was starting to grow a spike. And I'm like, yeah, but everything's cool. But the neighbor had scale and then it passed on to this one here, which is such a shame. She was so vigorous. I was so sad. But you see, again, the roots had stopped because of the lecker. But she's trying. They don't look hip, do they? All that spotting, I mean, if they were happy roots, they wouldn't have all this spotting on them. But she is able to absorb through these two. This one is still firm, it's still okay. This one is also still okay. But also because the lecker, I lost the growing tip on this one. So those are, not including the little stars that I had just recently filmed and put into this setup. That is so recent, nothing's happened there yet. No, no decline, but no progress either. So I don't know if that's a good thing. But these are all my little ICU candidates. And boy, are they nerve wracking. And I do wonder sometimes, is it worth it? But you know, for me, Yes, it is worth it. Also, because I'm learning. I'm learning if I can save them. How did I successfully save a Phalaenopsis? Something I have never, ever achieved before. My Phalaenopsis have usually just gone belly up, you know, and not crown rot. It was always in the root department. And then I can't seem to get them to thrive and grow more roots so that I can then pot them up again. So if these here were to come through, it would be an absolute first. And for me, the first thing was get rid of the abrasive base. Don't want to use sphagnum moss. So the hob filter it is for the humidity. And I'm seriously hoping it will work. Really, really, I really want to one day cut the curve and turn the corner and be able to say, I rescued this fowl from a rootless one to it's now in a pot. Whether I get it to bloom is another thing, step by step by step. But I have not yet rescued a fell, and I'm like, Neh. you know? Here we go. This is, I'm happy about, the Lelia Zip. That little growth is awesome. So there you have my little ICU unit. Quick update. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate people that tune in to videos like this. They're not the, ooh, ah, look at me, gorgeous, how well they're growing videos. So I appreciate the fact that you did tune into a video like this and thank you so very, very much. Have yourself a wonderful day and take care. Stay safe. Bye.